the breath and blood your connection. Your breath is take things for you intentionally change your breathing pattern. Connect with your emotional, mental, and physical state. With masturbation, oxygen is a key player in promoting blood flow for arousal. But guess what? A lot of us stop breathing when we feel pleasure. We hold our breath, tighten up, and forget to check in with our core function as humans. This can lower or even eliminate sensation to our most pleasurable parts. Task, focus on the breath when pleasing yourself. Once you're getting into it, touch your genitalia, breathe in your stomach, with every rub or stroke or pat, and slip shallow or quick breaks. Quick breaths, take in long breaths, and exhale slowly. This will help regulate your heart rate, get enough oxygen to all the parts that need them, and boost arousal with every breath. The body is one big erogenous zone. My goodness, reader, the body is super fascinating. The slightest touch in particular race has the power to send shivers in all directions. Genitalia often get all the credit, but there are often other fleshy bits that can serve you well in solo player and partner sex. Meet the erogenous zones. Parts of the body that excite sexual feeling when touched and simulated. Sensitive areas are like the neck, forearms, inner thighs, and buttocks react to different types of touch and you build up your arousal to the point where you can't help but masturbate. So no matter where you are with masturbation, whether you're still working on conquering those mental blocks, or you're a ruler of your own masturbation, erogenous zones are great, <laughs> are great areas to explore in order to find or enhance your pleasure. But where to touch, that's up to you. Each area of the body will have a different sensation based on the type of touch it receives. Touch can be broken out into a few categories. Rub, squeeze, caress, bang, pat, pinch, and lay. <laughs> All right, we got the waterfront. That's right. About the time when I'm on my body where I'm like, Laura, you're being ridiculous. By now, this is my inner saboteur talking. Take a beat, drop into mindfulness. Maybe you deserve a new forward of your soul playtime. Maybe it feels odd to have to give yourself permission to act on pleasure, but it's important. With all the messages you have been trillized about your own body, all the expression we have experienced and internalized, it's no wonder difficulties might arise from actually getting down to pleasure. Pass while the music is playing and the candles are lit. Find a quiet moment for yourself to feel your heart and listen to your breath. Your body is changing, changing and reacting to your arousal, and that is the ultimate permission to allow yourself the pleasure you deserve. Create your own template. I encourage you to create your own little nook in which to pleasure yourself, a pleasure station, if you will. Maybe this is your candlelit bathroom where you jerk, rub, or pat off in the shower. <laughs> or maybe it's your bed where you surround yourself with tons of pillows. Whatever it is, find a place that makes you feel great. Pass, if you were to make a little adjustments in, to your space that would make it easier to masturbate, what would you do? Would you keep the lubricant closer to the bed? Would you invest in a water-resistant throw blanket to use when masturbating? Make a list of those little upgrades and work your way toward creating your personal pleasure sanctuary. Go all about it. Visible, audible, and readable stimulation are natural part of soul play and can rub up the exploration you have with yourself. Plus they allow you to play out any fantasies you're interested in while the comfort of your own home. Tass, if interested, knowing not everyone will be in erotica, and that's okay. Take a peek at a few fe sexy photos or listen to some erotic audio. Notice the physical changes your body experiences. Even better, watch your general tailor, perhaps in a mirror, when encountering an erotic stimulus. There is something really sexy about seeing your own body's arousal. We got the waterfront. We got Fiona Zucker dreams. Positive and line dreams can relate to your actual or potential relationship skills. They can also reflect your power, real imagine, and signify boldness, courage, and the ability to stand up with pride for yourself and your beliefs. Negative implications. Fear of a dream line can express worry about criticism from an authority figure. If the line attacks you or seems about to pounce, it can make you feel or an imminent threat. Line, line has many mythical and contemporary connotations. It is the king of the jungle, the power and the sign of the zodiac. 
He's also the cowardly creature, creature in the film The Wizard of Oz, seeking the strength to banish which is the timidity. Dreams about lions are most commonly linked with notions of bravery, pride, leadership, and protected rage. The dream of the lion must thus represent any of the aspects of the dreamer's personality or character. The context in which the dream lion appeared can have important ramifications for the dream's interpretation. The animal's, the animal's appearance and how it behaves toward the dreamer are also relevant to the dreamer's interpretation. If the lion had some sort of power over the dreamer, the ability to resist his fortitude can have implications for the dreamer's level of physical or psychological strength in waking life. Head and ears, dream of the lion's ears, which just he thought to highlight fears that someone close to you is envious. The appearance of the lion's head in the dream can indicate that certain ambitions will be realized, like is Sarah. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> roaring playful lion. A lion roaring in an aggressive way suggests a need to deal with the jealousy of a friend or a deceit of work. A, play, a playful lion cub, on the other hand, can predict a new and satisfying friendship. Lion pride, a dream featuring a pride of lions indicates the possibility to start a project in which you will lead or work closely with a team. The waterfront, take three nipples, buttocks, stomach, inner thighs, back. Oh yeah, give that butt a rub. Apply a little pressure and try to match the motion with the in and out of your breath. Connect more your out of body experience. Your journals can't have all the fun. Squeeze breast, chest, buttocks, inner thighs, stomach. Yep, give your body a little squeeze. The sensation will drop blood to the area and make it more sensitive. This is a great opportunity to test your personal limits of how hard you like to be squeezed in those areas. Caress, neck, nipples, buttocks, stomachs, stomach, inner thighs, back, breast, chest. Try lightly touching these areas with the tips of your fingers. Go slow and follow where your fingers take you. Spank, buttocks, inner thighs. While you're vibing out and touching yourself, give your butt a <laughs> thighs. <laughs> a little spank. Fun fact, your pain tolerance is much higher when aroused. And that spank could be an excellent gateway to different types of erotic stimulation that isn't genitalia based. Plus it's super hot. <laughs> Pat, nipples, buttocks, stomach, and her thighs back. More than rub, less than spank. The pack can create a rousing sensation with a full hand tap on the body, bringing blood to the surface and making the area much more sensitive. Pinch nipples. With the pad of your fingers, give your nipples a little pinch. Press your leg and circular motions of pulling on the nipples can be rousing and deeply sensual. Sensual. Lick everywhere. With a flatter pointed tongue shape, you can create a unique sensation on different parts of your body. Of course, maybe you can reach all the places, but if you can reach, go for it. A straight leg to the inner wrist can do wonders. I guess you hear it for your hear it first. An orgasm is to be the not to be the best in it in solution to masturbation or sex, but it's a fantastic good time. When starting a masturbation journey with yourself, it's really easy to use uh, orgasms as a marker for winning at pleasure. Take time to really touch yourself, explore what feels good, and consider all the different arousal points. It's way more productive than furiously trying to reach an orgasm that may or may not be on the rise. And pleasure is less about reaching a climax and more about enjoying the ride. Orgasm phases. Orgasm can be broken down into four phases. Excitement, feeling aroused, feeling the pains in your genitalia, that's it. Plateau, heavier breathing. Close off, close her off. You're touching, you're feeling with her without another person. Orgasm, a burst of pleasure. Know everyone experiences orgasms differently. Maybe your orgasm feels like a release, while others might experience a rolling orgasm experience. Resolutions is often characterized as feeling spin, like you're coming down from Orgasm Mountain and enjoy the ride. Up the ante, wanna go pro? There are many ways to heighten your soul play night or day and take you over the pleasure edge and into the orgasm you're seeking. Here are some ideas to try. Erotic gels or stimuli. Help those 
help, does these help promote blood flow to the genitals and increase simulation? Try, try one out in your next solo, it's sad. They can be used by anyone, they do, but do check the label to make sure the materials do not cause an allergenic reaction for you. We're on this in chapter, chapter four. Watch yourself masturbate. I don't dare you, but, re but really this is a great way to get to know your body more. Things change when you're aroused. Your skin may turn a different color. Your genitalia might start to swell. Your heart can stop beating faster. Your genitalia might start to appear more wet. Take a mirror and really look at what you're doing down there. Get your brain used to seeing how your body reacts when stimulated. Do you think Zach Efron has, has, ever has a masturbation session where he doesn't look at his genitals? No way.